Hi, I'm Misa Ramirez and we're talking today with Suzanne Williams, co-author of the brand new series um, called Goddess Girls. Yes. And we are featuring on Books on the House for Kids and Teens, Athena and the Brain and Persephone the Phony. Phony. Athena the Brain, right? And Persephone the Phony. Right. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, we're very excited to have you here and I cannot wait to read this book this series to get them for my daughter who I just know is going to love them and to hear really about your collaboration with Joan Holub who is your co-author and to hear about how this series came about. Okay. Um, actually Joan and I have been friends for years and she used to live in West Seattle which is uh, not too far from me and over a number of years because we both belong to the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators mm -hmm. um, we used to get together for dinner and uh, just talk shop. And one during one of those dinners, she said, have you ever thought about writing with somebody else? And I said, uh, no, I actually hadn't. <laughs> and she said, well, would you be interested in doing a collaboration? Because uh, she said, I think our styles are very similar and we like to write for the same age groups. And I think it could be kind of fun. So I thought about it for about half a second. <laughs> I said, yeah, let's let's go for it. So we came up with a, a couple of proposals for new series. Mm -hmm. And Goddess Girls, which was really her idea, was the one that sold first. So that's how we came to do it. And by that time, it was like two years after we came up with the proposal, she had moved to North Carolina. So our collaboration was done completely through emails and attachments and Microsoft uh, Words toolbar, the reviewing toolbar that lets you delete and add stuff and make comments and stuff, which works really slick, actually. Yeah, and now you could probably Skype with her. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. We never have, honestly, but, but we certainly could. <laughs> yeah. So how do you come up with the, the ideas? How do you really work together? Do you both kind of, um, do, you, do you take different characters and work on them, or do you, is it really, truly a collaboration and that you're going back and forth all the time with the writing. Well, we, we discussed that quite a bit because um, we wanted to do it in the most efficient way possible, mm -hmm. uh, but it would sound pretty much like one person writing the, you know, the series. Mm -hmm. So, and we knew that some authors will trade chapters back and forth, but that seemed kind of unwieldy to us. So we ended up deciding that we would each basically take two characters and write uh, the book for that character, uh, the first draft, and then trade them back and forth. So um, she actually did one and four, um, Athena and Artemis, and I did the middle books, Persephone and Aphrodite, the first drafts. But then we traded them back and forth probably at least three or four times before our, uh, we even sent them to our editor. And so we would rewrite each other's lines, we would add dialogue, we would just, you know, we, we really took a heavy hand in each other's manuscripts. So uh, it's hard even now if I went back and read the books, I don't know if I could tell you which line was mine and which one was Joan's. Well, that's good. I mean, that's great for the reader because it really is one voice then. Right, yeah. And our editor, of course, helped a lot with that too, you know, wherever she saw something that she thought needed to be changed. Now, yeah. what's been the most fun about writing about these Greek goddesses when they're kids? Um, I think it was just a really fun experience to write a series with another person, you know, especially with Joan, because she's right. We do have very similar um, senses of humor, very similar styles of writing. Mm -hmm. So it was really pretty, um, you know, a pretty easy collaboration, I guess, you know, from that aspect. I, I figure that though writing with a partner, you probably spend one and a half times, you know, as much time writing mm -hmm. um, because of the going back and forth on all four books, you know, mm -hmm. instead of doing just, you know, two. It, it, it is a lot, it is more time involved, but I think that they were probably in better shape by the time we got into our editor than they would have been if I'd been working on my own because of that extra very, uh, you know, good pair of eyes, you know, and on the manuscript. Did you have to do a lot of research to get into the mythology? Um, yeah, we we have our sources, you know, I mean, I have to admit that I did use Wikipedia a few times for uh -huh. looking up <laughs> names of minor gods and goddesses that we needed, you know, for the stories, but um, I also had college textbook uh, mythology books that I looked, you know, at for some of the 
tales like uh, in Aphrodite, the beauty, there's the Atalanta uh, race, that, that tale is in there. So I, I looked at different versions of that you know, to help me out in writing that part of the story. How fun. And you have a tagline that it's, or uh, I think it's your tagline, the modern spin on the classic myth. Yeah, that, that's our editor's tagline. That's, oh, okay, <laughs> I love it. Do you have a favorite of the four that you've written? You know, which, do you have a favorite goddess? Uh, I don't know. I get asked that a lot. Um, um, I think I'm probably more like Athena than anybody. I suspect, uh, Joan, there's a lot of Athena in, in Joan too. Both of us would aspire to be Aphrodite, yeah. you know, beauty. <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, there's also a lot of Persephone, you know, her light and dark moods. <laughs> probably not so much of Artemis, who is the, the sports, um, the, the goddess who is into sports. Uh, I, I do like to work out. I go to the gym most mornings and, um, you know, because I'm sitting at my desk so much, I feel like I need to do something to get moving and I walk, but I've never really been into um, sports the way some girls are, I guess. Oh, poor Artemis. <laughs> poor <laughs> Artemis. <laughs> well, there's a such a big push with or an interest in mythology right now. I just imagine the books are going to fly off the shelves. Well, of course, we can always hope. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was reading on your website that you never actually wanted to be a writer. Is that correct? Well, I never really thought something I could do for a career. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I enjoyed writing, but I just, you know, it was nothing I thought you could make a, you know, living at or, you know, work at. So I, I you know, but like most writers, I really love to read, and I didn't really realize how much... Um, writing and reading are related. You know, they really are the flip sides of each other. And so it is your readers who eventually become writers if that's something that also interests them. Uh -huh. And so so how did you really make that leap then? Because you, you were a librarian, is that right? Yeah, I was an elementary school librarian. And eventually, uh, after thinking for years that I would like to write, actually since my 20s, I think, that was kind of a desire, um, I took a class through the Institute of Children's Literature so that was kind of my introduction to writing and it you know it was a good class taught me the basics of you know how to write dialogue how to write description how to put the two together right. and how to develop characters and i kind of just went on from there and later on found out about uh, the society of children's book writers and illustrators and got a lot of help from people in that group too wow well very good so you how long were you a librarian and when did you stop um uh, i started I was a librarian for about 24 years, uh -huh. um, but I was only full-time for the first 14, and after my first book sold, which is a little picture book uh -huh. called Mommy Doesn't Know My Name, uh -huh. uh, I went half-time after that for the next 10 years. Okay. So I would write you know, a couple of days a week, and then I'd be librarian a couple of days a week, and then eventually it got so I was doing so many school visits, um, especially in the spring that something had to give, <laughs> and I decided that was a good point to try, you know, going full-time, and I've been full-time ever since, so wow, that was well, that's great. 10 years. Yeah. That's great to be able to write full-time, do what you love, and work with kids still, you know. Right, yeah, so I love it. What's yeah. your next project? Um, well, I'm working on a middle-grade novel that I just, uh, you know, it's set on the Oregon coast, which is a place that I've always loved, mm -hmm. and it's a realistic, you know, fiction um, book. I can't really say too much about it right now, mm -hmm. but um, that's I'm working on that. And Joan and I are going to come up with some proposals for uh, probably series for slightly younger um, chapter book age, more like seven to ten probably. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to just you know see what sells after that, and that will determine what we'll be working on next. So the Goddess Girl series, then it's really just the four. It's not going to continue with other. Oh well, we never know, of course, with the series. It just okay. depends on how well the series does. You know, if it does really well, then of course there's always the possibility that the editor will come back and say, you know, could you write, you know, some more. So. Okay. And then, we have, and the age range for the Goddess Girls is what? Ideally, what? Um, ages eight to twelve. Okay. Oh yeah. See, my daughter's nine. It's perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Right, there is well, a little bit of light romance okay. in books, but uh, nothing steamier than hand holding. And no, no plans for a, a gods, right? A, the boy versions. 
Well, we would love to do that if the opportunity came up. Uh, our agent had a, a good idea for that. She said, oh, you could do a series called God Guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that's that. Yeah. That's very clever. We'll be looking for that one next. Right. Well, thank you so much for being here on Books on the House for Kids, and, and we hope that you'll be back. Thank you very much, Misa. It's been great to meet you. Nice, nice talking to you too, Suzanne.